So for our next presentation, our presenter has a long background in uh, film production and a lot of uh, media CGI type products. And he's based out of Florida and has been involved in the alternative fuel saving um, world for quite a few years, uh, uh, innovating different types of water fuel cell uh, electrolyzer technologies and for both gasoline and diesel. And quite a while back, he uh, had started a company, H2 Global. And he has a uh, uh, patent which is uh, granted, I believe, in a, a couple countries, US and Canada and, and so forth, kind of covering some of the innovations he's done. Um, who's familiar with Moray King? Quite a few of you. So Moray King has uh, kind of been in this, this whole field for many, many years before most of us have heard of, about any of this. He's written extensively on it and has looked uh, at quite a few things specifically relating to water technology and he considers um, uh, Waltz to be kind of the next Stan Meyer of uh, water fuel technology. I personally know three separate people who have been down to Florida to witness and look at the tests that he's done on, I believe, like a gas generator set, like a 3,500 watt, 4,000 peak champion generator set, where he can use a measured uh, amount of fuel and have it run a certain period of time and then add you know, 95% and higher amounts of water with just a, a, a small little trace of gasoline and it runs actually even longer. And so this presentation, actually last, uh, was year before last that you uh, presented uh, on this technology just to kind of show uh, what he's doing and where he's going. And so in this presentation he's going to show you um, some of the recent advancements that he's come upon and um, welcome Walt Jenkins. Thank you very much. There are 37 million billion gallons of water in the, our atmosphere, and I didn't know that, and I thought about a way to extract all that water and use it as fuel, and that has enabled us to create a project, which I'll get into in, in a little more depth, but basically we're going to take an RV bus, and uh, we're going to go from Tampa to D.C., and from D.C. to Silicon Valley, and do a presentation. Uh, on the trip, and we're not going to stop for fuel anywhere. We will extract the water from the air and convert that water to our fuel process. Uh, so, let me uh, let's see what else. We, also, the the oceans have about 300, over 332 million cubic miles of water, and we can convert salt water as well into fuel. And that took a number of years to get to a position where. Uh, we didn't have to, de well, first of all, let me say, that when we first did the seawater thing and I put it in the system, it, I turned it on and within five minutes it turned into green sludge and stopped the whole system. So that took a long time to figure out how the water coming in would go out and back into the sea just as clean as when it came in. And we've done that now. So uh, we're getting ready to launch this company in a very big way. Uh, to hopefully replace fossil fuels and stop the toxic uh, pollution of our environment, at least in that transportation sector. So water is the perfect clean fuel for humans, and uh, structured water is probably even better. <laughs> but uh, we no longer need to depend on toxic fossil fuels to, for our transportation. Our fuel system works in any car that exists now, and in any internal combustion engine, and in any jet turbine engine. And it um, is pennies per gallon. It is up to 99% cleaner uh, with the iteration that needs a little bit of fossil fuel, a little bit of gas, a little bit of diesel. But we're in the lab working on the reliability of 100% water uh, fuel that doesn't need any fossil fuels at all. We can extract the fuel from the air, like I said, and a semi-truck does not need to stop for fuel. It can cross the entire USA several times without stopping for fuel. The biggest problem would be keeping the driver awake, and uh, he has to stop for uh, usual things and food. <laughs> but uh, when they get actual automatic driving trucks and no drivers are needed, uh, 
and, and eventually they'll get there, but I think that might be extremely dangerous. But uh, anyway, uh, you can have an automatic truck that just goes by GPS to where it's supposed to go and doesn't need a driver. So if you're a truck driver now and you're doing well, I would think about in 20, 20 years maybe find another occupation. So I don't make claims that I have an over-unity process for engines, but I'm entertaining the idea that it is possibly happening. And before I decide one way or the other whether to make that claim, I would have to have absolute empirical, unchallengeable proof. So that's what we're working on. Um, our fuel process works in any combustion engine, as I've said, and it does up to 1,100 times, we may go past that. And in a little bit, I'm going to show you a video of an engine running on 1% gasoline and the test that we do where we run it on just 5 milliliters of gas, see how long it runs by gas by itself. Then we'll see how long it runs when you put that 5 milliliters into the water system. So, um, on the scooter you just saw, we did a dynamometer test at an independent lab. And uh, <coughs> the red line here is the water fuel. And it's he at this point, and, and this is the gasoline. We did two runs on gasoline, a blue and a green r line. When it first started, the gasoline went higher. Ours was a little slower accelerating, but then lasted at a much higher rate, almost double, uh, over the power of the gasoline. This is measuring horsepower. And this, the, the com it's a computerized dynamometer, and it's programmed the same for the test. So it, these are very good uh, results that are uh, certifiable. And uh, I was quite happy, even though this particular test that, that we ran that day, the there was a problem with the system right right in here. And uh, th this in the gas area, you can see it's varying a lot. In the water fuel system, it just started tapering. So it was, a <coughs> but uh, there was something wrong with the system because before the test, <coughs> someone kicked over the, bu the bucket that or the box that I had the, the water fuel in, and y you can't do that because the parts are just sitting in there. <laughs> and so that kind of messed up stuff. But all in all, we got a very good result, and we're getting ready to do a whole bunch more tests like this. So very confident that we'll have a good day with that. There's big oil and lots of money, and somebody got handed a bunch of money to keep us off the, the internet, and that's exactly what's happening. You come up with an idea that is disruptive, you, you'll be banned. And so I called a congressman and talked to him about this, and he said, well, you're not alone. I said, what do you mean? He said, they're doing this to everybody. They're even doing it to congressmen. They're doing it to Trump. And he said, they've done it too much. Now the wheel is turning. So that about a week or two later, Ted Cruz started this investigation into this antitrust of these big tech companies that are doing this. It turns out the impetus behind all this is Chinese communists. They want the market in China, but in order to get that billion plus market, they have to comply with the protocols, and those are to implement this kind of shadow banning and basically censorship of anything that disagrees with whatever the official policy is. So our company faced that, and boy, I, I really got mad about it, and I, I did something about it, and I called, and I found out that it was happening to a lot of people. And I can tell you right now, Mr. Cruz, I hope you knock the hell out of these assholes. <laughs> so my problem is, how do you get this out to the public without getting pirated out of business before you even develop your market? So you we came quick. up with a system, and that is a five-stage plan. But the key thing is, how does that protect us? Well. We're going to have a lot of people around the world of all these countries who have a vested interest in maintaining what they bought. 